All right, everybody, welcome to the After Infidelity podcast. My name is Sasani. And I'm Danny. And I'm excited because every so often we get to interview some very interesting people who are making an impact around the world. Danielle and I have had the privilege of traveling around the world. And a lot of times people highlight the great experiences, the wonderful people that they meet in different pockets of the earth. And we are fortunate enough to say that we've done that. But when you have special people who are in your own backyard, Family, as they say. Is that what they call it? Mm -hmm. It's always special. And so without further ado, uh, <clears throat> this is a couple that's making impact in the lives of of, of couples um, in a particular region. I mean, they have a reach that spreads throughout the United States, but they're doing some amazing things in their part of the world. And uh, without further ado, I want to introduce Wes and Nisa Stringfellow. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Hi. Hey. How you guys doing? Hi, we are good. We are good. <laughs> now, let me just start by saying, listen, I don't want to toot my own horn, toot, toot. but I believe that we do awesome work in the lives of couples. And so whenever we find other couples who are doing things that are just as powerful, it feels good. It feels good to know that you're not the only one out there because there's a lot of incompetent, I would say, um, professionals or people who aren't equipped to deal with sticky situations, people who are in crisis. And when we were introduced to you, we were amazed at your organization. We were amazed at the level of reach that you have and how long that you have been doing it. So what I want you to do, um, because nobody can do it like you can, give us a, an understanding of who you are, what your background is, and, and what is this marriage getaway that has been impacting couples for, I think, 25 years? Yep, that's right. Um, so... We have been married ourselves for 36 years. Wow. You know, which, is, which is defeating itself. And we actually, we kind of just fell into this thing. God was like, he had this plan for us and we were not ready. We didn't even know. Um, we just, you know, tried to get a couple of friends together. Um, we noticed that in our own circle, uh, a lot of our friends were just falling out, not making it. And mm -hmm. we said, you know what? We're going to do something to encourage uh just the couples in our circle. I wanted to be happy. Right. <laughs> we just want people to be happy. <laughs> no, so so we uh we had a dinner, just a Jamaican night, and you know, unbeknownst to us, about 40 couples showed up. You know, wow. so we, you know, we kind of looked at each other like, well, maybe God is trying to tell us something. Right, right, um, right. So that <laughs> that was pretty much the birth of what we do. Absolutely. And it was 25 wow. years ago that we um started hosting marriage getaways and Wes has a thing about calling a retreat because we know that sometimes people say retreat. And in my experience, most husbands are like, I'm not going to a retreat to tell everybody my business. And um, he praised the word getaway. And so because it's your getaway and we tell couples as we host this event, if you want to come and stay in your room, then this is your getaway. But at least you are investing in your marriage. However, no one ever stays in the room because we make it a fun time. So 25 years ago, we started hosting marriage getaways and um, it's a, a weekend getaway where people can come and receive um, wisdom, mm -hmm. resources, impartation. But the most I shouldn't say the most important part, but one of the most amazing things is you're having fun with your spouse while you're doing it. And that's the caveat. And we say, if no one is going to have a good time, we are guaranteed to have a good time because we're investing in our marriage. So it's been a journey, but it is um, now we I think last year we had 142 couples and wow. it has been an amazing event every year. We do um, look for the couples that are struggling, but we also want to say, hey, if you have a, a marriage that's uh, stellar, we want you to show up. If you have a marriage that's just in mediocrity. We want you to show up. But if you're in crises, show up as well. Mm. Know that you'll leave with something and you'll be impacted. I personally think there's so much for everyone. When we went, it was the best fun, the most fun we had ever had at mm. any retreat, <laughs> getaway. Matter of fact, what it was is we've really never been to a getaway. <laughs> right. We've been to yeah. many retreats. 
And it just paled in comparison to what y'all brought to the table. Every single session was packed with something where you could take away from it. So we were like, you know what? Forget this. We out the retreat business. We out the get the getaway yeah. business. We're just going to send everybody that we know to this event because it is that impactful for marriages. Wow. That, that, you know, that means a lot to hear from you guys. Um, Cause you know, we followed you guys. We know what you do. Um, we've read your books. So that really means a lot. Um, it lets us know that we are on the right track and, actually hearing from God and what he wants to do. Um, and I agree with you. There are some ministries or not even ministries, but some people out there. And I was like, wow, that was some bad advice. <laughs> I don't know any other way to put it. Um, and what I've learned is when you become in fellowship with another academy as yourself, um, just looking to help couples, you find out that you are not in competition at all. You are a partner, uh, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder in this fight for these marriages out here. Um, and if you don't look at it that way, I don't think you're going to succeed. I agree. And let me just add this, that I'm just thinking about, you said you had a hundred and what, 20 something couples, 30 something, 142 couples. I mean, that's, that's a lot of couples coming out to a marriage getaway, a marriage retreat. It just makes me think that there's some kind of secret sauce here that we most people don't know about because people struggle to get those numbers. I mean, people really do a lot of work to get people to come out, especially as couples. It's one thing to have a women's retreat or a men's, you know, camping, something like that. But to bring couples together at the same time, the work that goes into that, having to leave the family and figure out what to do with the kids and all the schedules that come together where people feel like they have to be at this retreat. I mean, that's a big deal. And and just to piggyback off of what you're saying, I mean, retreats that I'm familiar with, if you have 20, 30 couples, you're doing good. Even major ministries, major churches don't bring in a hundred plus couples. So to Danielle's point, I don't think that all success should be measured by numbers alone, but obviously I mean, you're doing something significant to be able to do that. So what is that sauce? No, don't tell the sauce. Like, okay, give us the recipe, but leave out like three, four ingredients. <laughs> That's how they really do it, you know? I think um, the, uh, the best part of what is provided on our weekend getaways is authenticity and transparency. I think people, mm. we, we choose couples who've actually walked the journey. And we say this majority of the team mm. and majority of the guests that we invite to come and share and speak have had the experience. And we, we took this from you all, the experiential. <laughs> they have shared in the experience to say, hey, this is something that is needed, but we also love it for ourselves. So people come and volunteer. So majority of our team, we've either encouraged, um, strengthened, counseled, coached, or something invested in them. And I think that that's one of the things is that um, we make the investment. And I believe that in order to build relationships, and I was sharing this with a pastor friend of ours, I said, we don't want you to just come and speak and just, just show up and then leave. If you're married, This is for you, too. And so you come and share, but come and talk with the people. And so the the greatest gift that is there is that relationships are established just like one big happy family reunion. Your cousins you never met from all over the side of the uh, world. Yes, in the U.S., but our friends are coming from Okinawa, Japan, and we have people coming from other um, nations. So this is the part where it's like, Wow, God is doing this, and but it's through relationship, and I think that's the secret sauce is the relationship. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this question because I think you know when people think of say coming here to do an intensive, they have in their mind uh, an idea of what it is, and I have to kind of break down barriers and reset proper expectations for them to feel comfortable about what they're about to step into. So when you hear getaway, when you hear retreat, they may be referencing what they've been to before. But as we've just discussed, what what we get there is so completely different. So for those who've never been to a getaway, give them some type of understanding about what that experience is the moment they pull up to the moment that they leave. Um, so, you know, it is an experience. And you know, people ask us, can, can you come to our city? That's like, you know, we can, but the help and the volunteers and all the components that go with it from all the people who help and just want to just want to make a difference. That's one thing that makes a difference. Uh, 
But I think the major thing is every couple and usually the men, when they at the end of these getaways, they're like, you know, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't know that we were going to get all that. I didn't know that I needed what I didn't know I needed. So what's the all that? <laughs> what's some of that? Babe? All that is the dance. We have a, a, a gala, a ball on Saturday night. On Friday night, we do our meet and greet. This year is our 90s neon theme. Uh, where we're going to just um, bust out in 90s gear and have games, couples games, as well as um, some contests that are going to be going on. Um, amazing, phenomenal recording artists, uh, worship, and then not only dynamic speakers as yourselves mm -hmm. that are bringing um, great content, great um, enrichment. Um, there's a spa at the, the locations that we choose. We try to choose somewhere where you can walk away and go to the spa <laughs> and take some time for yourself to just kind of get a couple's massage or if you want to do it by yourself. Um, we're, we usually choose a five, four to five star resort. This is a five star resort that we will be at. Uh, the grounds are absolutely beautiful in the fall, headed toward the winter. Um just everything from the moment, from the T-shirts that you're going to wear, the uniformity, that's another gift. So we yeah. try to do something. This will be Veterans Weekend. So on Sunday, we're going to all put on our military gear in honor of the veterans and do a special salute to them. There's a lot of things. So each year, we try to choose themes that will impact uh, the lives of others in terms of what we've actually experienced throughout the year or what other couples are experiencing throughout the year. So uh, mm -hmm. it's fun, fun, fun. It's it's fun, fun, fun. So we say fun, ministry, fun, ministry, fun. But fun, I, I, fun, fun. I will give one secret though. One of the secrets is very strategically planned out. Um, from the time that we have you guys coming, um, most retreats, when you start on the weekend, they start on a Friday evening or something like that. So you're getting home from work, you're getting the kids, you're trying to get them to Rush. grandma's house, you're rushing, then you got to get back in, rush hour traffic and drive an hour and a half to two hours for those who live in Chicago to get here. So by the time you get there, you're frustrated. Um, probably half the people there, you're going to bicker about something on the way up there. So by the time you get there, you've got your guards up. Um, so we strategically plan it so that you need to take off that day, get the calf, somebody pick the kids up from school, get yourself there you get plenty of time so by the time you get there you're relaxed um and there's plenty of relaxation time um this year is going to be a little bit more busier a lot of it will be optional for those who really need it and who really want it but for those who are really just coming to have a good time and and just enjoy their spouses there's plenty of time we have uh, a few sessions for you to go through and then there's some relaxation time so some you time together time um, and that is strategically planned in there so that you don't feel bombarded by the weekend with conference after class after session after session um, so it is an experience and plus with all the other fun activities that we had in there um, it's it's pretty and I always say this jokingly but kind of seriously but jokingly um, if you don't enjoy yourself this weekend there's a money back guarantee you can have your money back if you don't think that what we are giving you is worth it. Um, of course, none of that is written down and nobody's taking us up on that. None of that's written. Disclaimer, let's take a disclaimer. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that that's a strong promise you're giving because you, you got to be real bold and know your stuff to say that, right? And it really is a phenomenal, phenomenal mm. getaway. I can't say enough about it. But I know that there are challenges when it comes to putting on events like this. There's challenges for couples to get there. That's probably why you go through the measure of saying, hey, listen, this is how you're going to get here. You're going to take Friday off. I love that part because people really struggle to think things through when they're in crisis and when they're stressed. So talk about like, what are some of the challenges that couples are having, which would say y'all need to get here yesterday. Like there, there's, this is not something to, to consider. This is something that you must do. Um, I think one of the things that we actually added a bonus night onto this year. Um, so we've added a Thursday night and it is really just for you to come and receive. It's a prayer and prophetic. We're going to have praise worship leaders. Um, Cause a lot of times our praise leaders and the people who are on that team, they don't really get a chance to and receive one leadership and yeah. leadership. So we have invited them plus anybody else who wants to come up on that Thursday night. And we're just going to let our hair down and receive It's going. 
you know, nobody's going to be really be speaking. Um, we're going to give a few words of encouragement, um, but it's just going to be a very uh, relaxed time and a time for you to just soak what, whatever yeah. you need at that time for you and your wife. Because sometimes- Well, what well, part, part two, Hosea, before you jump in, because I really want you to speak to leaders because, you know, oftentimes we who are in the leadership position are so busy ripping and running and doing, we don't even consider the fact that even though we're the helpers that we need some help, <laughs> like we're the ones that actually need to take some time off and be in that space. So what can you say to leaders who really need to find that reason to get to this event? Uh, one of the things I'll say that is that you won't be alone, first of all, <laughs> because a lot of people do not want to, uh, be amongst uh, a lot of people that they feel like they're going to be pulled on or feel like they're, you know, that they're going to have to come to work. Um, acknowledge that you're a husband and wife and that you need to invest in yourself. And we do have a special uh, workshop geared toward leaders. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're still not people and we're still not a husband and wife that walking through regular marriage challenges. So we definitely would like for uh, the leaders to know that it's a safe place for you. You don't have to feel bamboozled or bombarded. Uh, you can come. As a matter of fact, one of our uh, good friends, family, um, joined and came the first year and they did not tell us they were pastors. They they hit out. They hit out to the very end. Mm -hmm. And then they finally said, OK, we'll come clean when we asked all the anybody in leadership. Will you come forth? And they came forth. So it's like but they said they just wanted to see. But since that time, more leaders have come and, and we, we don't quite understand it, but then we do understand it because we're leaders and we need a break. Um, so the break is not to, to say we're hiding, but to say that we need some time to just be able to invest in our marriage. And, and if you're always pouring out and you never get anybody to pour into, then you're, you're giving from an empty cup. So everybody needs somebody. I was just having a great conversation with one of my practitioners and we were just talking about how he has a mentor in his life. And he said, man, you know, I see you working all these couples and you're just going from pillar to post. Like, who do you talk to and where's your relief and what's your outlet? And, and I think that is why you probably have so many leaders coming, because most leaders don't have anyone. He said they're very protective. They're protective over their marriage, over their emotions, over what they're going through because they're in a position of influence and they don't want to have a negative impact on the people. But but oftentimes they're pouring out of an empty vessel. Right. So thank God you have something for the leaders. But here's the question, whether they are a leader, whether spiritual or pastor or whatever the case may be, or whether they're a regular um just a regular church member, or maybe they don't go to church at all and they come. What are you what are you finding are the general issues that most of these couples are struggling with? I would say um, in this season that people have lost their first love. And and I really feel that way. Um, and I, if you could take the spiritual component out of it, I think people have walked into a place of um, a mediocrity or just mundane or going through the motions. And sometimes your marriage is just stale and you need a refresher. You need to go and remember, remember yourselves so that you can go back to the spaces and places that made you realize why you fell in love in the first place. Sometimes, uh, you know, memories do bring, uh, sometimes tears to your eyes or when's the last time have you written a love letter to your spouse? Or when's the last time you actually, um, put your phone down or left it in the car and actually went in the restaurant <laughs> and ate wow. and had a conversation, you know? So there are dynamics that couples miss from their first love. And I believe that um, it doesn't matter what walk you're coming from. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a leader. We are a faith-based nonprofit organization, but that we have people from all walks of life coming. But the caveat is that we do know that God can change your life, but you need to get back to your first love because people can be so spiritually minded. They're no earthly good. You can but can you yeah. just as a point of clarity, what do you mean when you say first love? Because there are certain people who may be on their second marriage, third marriage or first. Right. So when you say first, like I had a girlfriend before I got my, So who's the first love you're talking about? So when we talk, <laughs> that's a good, that's, we, you know, I don't think we didn't think about that. Huh? But so first, um, on a spiritual level, when we say get back to our first love, we're talking about that first, not first, but the relationship that we once had with our father, our spiritual father, that let's yeah. get that in order. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's get that from here to here with our heavenly father in order. 
Then when we talk about our first love with our spouse, our, our current spouse, our current spouse, <laughs> we want to talk about getting back to those first, like when you first started dating, when you first met, when you first proposed, your when first you're on year the of phone marriage, hours and hours and never right. you hang up, you hang up, you hang up. Right. Let's, let's <laughs> those those days. Days. Yeah, those you know. are cool now days. It's like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> if you even say right. bye, it's just like click. <laughs> right. You know. So let, let's 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 talk about those and, and get back to those. Let's make an effort, you know. And we always say, you know, we don't want to necessarily do all the exact same things we did because you do need to change up. But what we talk about when uh, getting back to that first is getting back to that energy. Keep that same energy that you had when you were dating. Let keep me keep that same line. energy yeah. that you had when I was chasing you um, or when you were chasing me or when Nisha was dropping her purse in Chicago State University trying to get my attention. You know, let's get back to that energy. <laughs> Don't get mad because she had game now. <laughs> it worked, I guess. I guess that it sounds worked. like game to me, Nisha. <laughs> well, you know, retreats and or getaways can be uncomfortable for some people because, you know, it, people feel like, okay, I've got to mm -hmm. get vulnerable. I have to expose myself in front of others. And maybe for some people, it's very difficult to expose themselves in front of their spouse, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to be intimate. I remember some exercises where we did where it was very intimate and connected. Um, what do you try to do or do you try to make couples feel comfortable in those spaces or do you push them into a space where you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable? I think I'll just say that we have something for every moment. Uh, we want couples to feel uncomfortable, but we also want you to feel um, comfortable as an individual. And before I was a wife, I was a woman. And so therefore, and then I had to learn how to be a wife. So we have breakout sessions for the women and for the men. Danielle is hosting the um, women's breakout and Hassani's hosting the men's breakout. And the truth is, is that these are those spaces where you can kind of connect with people and can connect with the women of your kind, right? <laughs> the bottom line is, is that I don't always want to talk to Wes about every emotion. Eventually it'll get to the point where I share with him. But at the same time, sometimes I need to ask questions that maybe make me feel uncomfortable. But having that safe space as a wife, having that safe space as a husband, as a matter of fact, we're always waiting on the husbands to come out of their men's session um, every year, at least 30 mm -hmm. minutes behind schedule they put us. Because men, I guess, are hungry for that manpower. I don't know what it is. But also, we have a first time as reception. I wanted to say that. So if it's your first time, don't worry. You won't feel like the outsider. You'll have your own private first time as welcome reception because we want you to feel special for being the first time at this marriage getaway. I wanted to mention yeah. that. That's important. That's you cool. Get a gift and the people you usually connect with there every year, it's like you're rekindling the the family reunion with that first timers that you came with that year. So I wanted to say that, but the sessions of breakout are impactful. We have private rooms. So if you need to meet someone one-on-one um, -on -one because you're in crises, you know, sometimes our guests will be willing and our speakers will be willing to take you to the side and have a, a private session with you. And then a prayer room. So if you have crises and different things, you need prayer. Some people are not always in marriage crises. Their, their marriage may not be in crises, but their health may be in crises. There may mm -hmm. be a decline in some other areas like finances. You never know. We're bringing it this year. Mental health, physical health, financial unity, um, estate planning, um, I could go on and on business and real estate and entrepreneurship. We're bringing it this year with experts who are thriving in these areas. So um, it's something for everybody. For those who are like, oh, my God, I need to be there. How do I, how do I find out more? Like, where do I go? How do I register? So our, our website is www.heartlifemarriagegetaway.com. Heart Life, H E A R T L I F E, getaway, marriagegetaway.com. And there you will find all types of resources and you will find out what's going on. You'll find the pricing, you'll find the resort that you can click at a button and go ahead and reserve your room. And the rooms are run anywhere from doubles, which we hope you won't take advantage of a double <laughs> at a weekend marriage getaway, all the way to um, exclusive villas and suites. So it's, it's beautiful, a beautiful resort, and um, you can come and register, www.heartlifemarriagegetaway.com. 
listen, uh, for all of you who are watching right now, you know, we've been in this space a long time. And when you've been in it so long, you can quickly in seconds kind of size things up and be like, "Mm -mm, that's not for you. Yeah, maybe. Okay. But this right here, like there's only a few things that we really get excited about promoting. This is one of those things. So what I want you to do is I want you to click on the link. I want you to scan your phone over the QR code. I want you to register today. Get in there. There's, I'm sure, just a few rooms left. They would love to have you. Uh, if you have any questions, there's information b- below that you can contact them. And uh, let's 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 all meet. Let's all meet. Some of you we know. Some of you we spend time with. So it'll be a great time to have a reunion. And some we may know at a distance. We've never met, but we're kindred spirits because you've been connected to the community. And it'll be an opportunity for us finally to meet in person and break bread. But make sure you get there. Once again, remind them of the dates and remind them of where to go. It's our November 7th through the 10th, um, 2024. And we will be at the beautiful Grand Geneva Resort in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And so um, there are several airports that lead to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, but we're about an hour and maybe 45 minutes from away O'Hare. from O'Hare and O'Hare no, no, Airport. I'm... Yeah, this is actually closer from our hair. Okay, but yeah. November seventh through the tenth, and Grand Geneva Lake Geneva Resort in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So that's where we will be. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Well, we thank you too for, I know your schedule is busy. I know you have a lot going on, but we appreciate you coming on and, and sharing this with our audience. And we look forward to seeing you there and having an amazing, amazing weekend. Thanks Thank for you having for us. having us. We're very appreciative. We love y'all too. <laughs> love you back. <laughs> love you more. All right, guys, you're watching the After Infidelity podcast. See you on the, the next episode. Take care.